Okay, good afternoon. Uh, welcome back. Uh, now we, we're, we have uh, Luciano Bello, who's going to talk about towards easier security patch porting. So, please welcome Luciano. Thank you. Thank you. Like a normal disclaimer, this is extremely alpha thing. It's kind of like an idea. So, the talk is kind of like a, like a call for comments and suggestions. So for that, we are going to do something like uh, we used to do a lot here in DevConf with Gobi. Where now we are going to do it with Etherpad. So here in this URL in the bottom, the, the URL will be there all the time in the presentation. So the, the, the bullets in the presentation are there. So if you have any comments or, or something, uh, please write it down there because I'm really interested in, in super, as much as possible detail in the feedback. Um, yeah, well, the, the idea will be like, I will take kind of like half the time for presenting the idea, and then we're gonna discuss, of course, with you with the microphones, but also maybe on IRC if somebody's there, or, uh, well, or we'll take a look to the comments that they are there in the, in the other part. Okay, so let's start. So, nowadays, if we want to patch something in Debian, what we do is something like this. We go to the Debian security tracker. We see that in the bottom there are some links. One of them is to a GitHub commit. So we click there. We get the diff that solves, that we assume that solves the, the, the vulnerability that we want to fix. And then we run patch on, on the source that we want to fix with that patch. And we get a lot of errors. Basically, that's the workflow. Um, any of you are familiar with this workflow? Any of you tried to do this? OK, that's good. So this is mostly a talk for you. I don't know what I'm going to do the rest, but I'm, I'm happy that you're here. <laughs> um, so the, the idea is how to, how to automatize this process. So. Um, so for that in IBM, where is it, IBM is my employer, so half of the time I, I'm, I'm working there on this project there, um, we thought, okay, maybe what we can do is to like pull all the URLs that we see in the security tracker, put it in the database, then go to, for example, GitHub, collect the patches that we found there, uh, then try to massage them to see if they fit in the vulnerable source code, and um, once that we have the results, we put them back in the security tracker. So the reason why the monkey is there is because for now, we put it like in a Grease monkey extension. Uh, you, you will see how this works. Let's, let's go to demo time. So this is, for example, one vulnerability. This is a moving target because, I mean, all the time they are fixing problems in, in, in Debian. So we try to make sure that all the demos work, but maybe something does not work. So the, the normal, the, the normal sec um, security tracker looks like this. Mm -hmm. You see, it looks like this. So I'm not sure if you notice the difference, but the difference is like there is a um, column that used to be there. So that's the column that we are adding now with the, with the Grease Monkey extension. So if you activate Chris Monkey, we see another column. And we see, for example, that we have a check in green. And that means that um, one of the patches that they were added here in the bottom, you can see in the bottom there are two patches from GitHub. One of those ones, it, could, it, it was ported automatically by the application. The other one is still in process. That's why it has this uh, loop. See? So if we, if we go there, take some time, loading, loading, loading. Yep. From there, we just can download this patch that is fully Kilt compatible. So if you download it and you import in your Kilt, it will work. There will not be hangs, broken, and that kind of things. So um, automatically, we grab it from GitHub. We run it in the, in, the, in the vulnerable source code, 
in this case in the version 7.3.2.5 um, and we well w once that it merged we make sure or we make sure we, we, we try to check for example if it compiles so if it compiles we have some sort of guarantee that the patch is good uh, sometimes in the compilation process also we have to go through testing and that kind of things so that's 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 the main idea of the of the tool uh, here we, for example we well in the initial stage this is the stages that we pass through so the initial stage we download the source code and then we apply by one one the hacks the hanks uh, for example this hank we apply it there and then at the end of it we build. And if everything is fine, we said, okay, this is a super easy trivial case. You don't have to deal much with it. You just can download the patch. So we have other situations too. For example, um, in this example, check this out. The three um, patches provided by GitHub, by the by Upstream. So these are these three X. X means we couldn't, for some reason, we couldn't adapt the patch to make it go through. But there are also one, one check mark. That means because we could get the patch from Jesse. Check it out in, in oh sorry, from, that's the back there. <laughs> from Wisi, should be Wisi there. Uh, because in Wisi it's already, it's already fixed. So we could go to Wisi. Uh, to Wisi. We, because uh, the kilt format has uh, the, the header and the kind of things, we knew that that patch fixed that vulnerability. We could adapt it, check it out, because, because the version is exactly the same, or almost the same. That adapting was so much easier than trying to backport something from 8.1.3. We just basically took the patches from here, or from here, and we adjusted it to here, and we took and we know that now works. So also we can download the patch from here. So if you notice, there are some situations that, uh, that they say single solution here in the top. And, and why is that? Because as part of the, of the, of the massaging the patch to, to port it automatically, we introduce ambiguities. What, what that means? So check it out this situation. In this situation, we have um, some patches that they have this double check. This double check means we have multiple solutions. How we end up with multiple solutions? How we end up with multiple packages? And with multiple patches? Well, because in the in the in, in the process to, to try to put the patch back to an old version, maybe for example, we remove the offset. So we said, okay, try to find the context of this patch somewhere in the file, and maybe that context is repeated in the file. For example, in this case, we try to, 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 uh, to backport this patch. It's a super simple patch. But we could find many places where this could uh, match. So in, in this particular case, we found two situations where it can match. You can match in this context. You don't have to pay attention to the details here, but basically, this is one possible patch. This is also one possible patch. Check it out, there is a different, different line number. This is 283, and the other one was 259. Or we have a third option where we patch both situations. Okay, I don't know what happened here. So this is, this is incomplete, but it should have both, both um, we should insert these lines twice in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the file. Well, Say it again? Patch one. Uh, patch one was that example. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. Good catch. So here you can see that uh, the, the same insertion was twice. Um, so yeah, that, that's why we end up with these with this multiple solutions where you, can, where you can download three versions of this backboard patch. 
and that's what we represent with this, uh, with this small tree. Um, yeah, there are other situations like that one, for example, this one. Uh, again, it's the insertion of this single line. The insertion of a single line can happen twice, or can happen single times. Or three times. And this one happened three times. So we represent these ambiguities with this tree in the bottom. So what happens sometimes is like, uh, for example, this case that um, the, the real patch is the combination of those two commits. So if we want to create the patch that creates those both commits, we do the following. We take one of the existing patches and we create something, something based on this. So we, we click there. And here we have all the hands that are included. And we can choose which ones do we want to insert and which ones we don't, don't want to consider. Uh, we can filter by file, by CDE, or by origin. For example, in this case, both coming from GitHub. So in this case, we change this filter. We're going to focus only on this vulnerability. And we just add the other hack that was in the other, in the other commit. Once that we choose all the hands that we want to insert, we just keep clicking proceed, and the backend will again try to measure them, again try to compile it. Um, in addition, we can say, okay, for example, this, this hack in particular, maybe try to have a different strategy. So we have this idea of heuristics, which is the way to insert a patch in an old version. So, uh, for example, that is a default strategy. Let, let's take this one. Which is basically tries to, okay, it says, first tries normal patch, the, the command patch, then tries to uh, find in the same, in the same uh, file, trying to find in any offset of the file where the context matches, then uh, something called it fast in, in patching, which is basically ignore the first line of the context, then ignore the, the, the bottom line of the context. That's, that's what we do with, with these parameters. Uh, we have other strategies, for example, ignore the file name. Maybe, the, maybe, the, maybe this difference belongs to a different file because the file was renamed or something like that. So we, we, we can set different strategies, different heuristics. Uh, we have to consider that more generic are these heuristics more ambiguity we may insert. So, um, so yeah, it's yet another thing that we can, we, we can do. So when we click proceed here, we're gonna ask for an authorization token because this push in the, in the backend, uh, I'm not sure if I, if I will be able to. Um, and then this will put the, the, the full process in the queue and after some time, we'll give you the results uh, to see if how, how that went. So if you go to the build, probably will look like in progress. Or, or probably waiting, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to process my, uh, some patches now. Yeah. So now this one is in waiting. OK, so you can create your own patches very quickly from the web, based on the, on the patches that we have already there. A, common, a very common thing is, for example, uh, the, the, the push also includes changes in the change log or something like that, that we don't care about. So we can disable those ones automatically. So, so far, with, with, with a very simple strategies, uh, which is offset, fuzzing, ignore files, uh, all the, all, from all the, 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 the patches that we found, that we automatically found, which is the full bar, we could automatically port those ones in blue, which may not represent a lot, but consider that these ones are patched for free. So now you can basically focus on those, they are around 100. So on those 100 patches, and they are trivial cases. You just can directly download the kilt and it's done. You don't have to do nothing else than compile it, and of course make sure that the patch patches whatever you want to patch. Um, 
That's usually because the security team makes a really good effort in putting this, uh, the, 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 commit, the, the patching information in the security tracker. So this is basically a, a small list of, of, of the features that we have so far. So for testing that the patch works, that at least makes syntactic, uh, um, syntactic sense, we, we build it uh, in a pay builder, in a, a pay builder. Um, also, we provide you a, a kilt ready patch, uh, reddish, because for example, that's not include the, the header, which uh, DB3 or DEP3 uh, ask you to include. But uh, that's probably something that will come in, the, in future versions. Um, also, we have multiple providers, uh, in some cases different distributions, in some other uh, different distributions from Debian, but also could be, also we, we, we pull things from other version control systems, like for example, Wireshark, they have their own version control system, so we pull from there. Um, it could be great, for example, to pull from different distributions also. Uh, we have uh, heuristics that are more flexible than patch, uh, because patch is, it's a, it's a good tool, but sometimes it's a bit old and was, with, was done with a different mindset somehow. Uh, so we re-implement patch, and we, we are very flexible in what we can do with it. Um, and we managed to visualize ambiguities, that, that yet another thing that patch cannot do. We easily can spot which are the trivial cases. So sometimes I'm making the queue in the cafeteria at work, and can see, okay, this one, this patch, will not take me more than 20 minutes because I know that works. Uh, I know that works in the meaning that I know that, uh, that it will not be super long. I can do it in, in 20 minutes, just I need to compile it. And if that's not, I can re quickly rerun something based on that strategy. The, 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 the goal that we start the project uh, with was to have a platform where security patches are shared automatically ported to different versions, and multiple stakeholders can define together what is a good patch and consume solutions from others. Because remember the, 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 the ugly process that I told you in the very beginning? The same process is done by many distributions at the same time, by, by, by many derivatives at the same time. HP is doing the same thing for their own custom packages. They try to backboard patches constantly. So if we, if, we, if we have a place where we already know, okay, this is the patch for this vulnerability, and this is the way that you have to adapt it to your old version. Uh, just, it's, it's one click away. We can automatically uh, do this, this transformation and people can define together what is a good patch. Maybe with thumbs up, I don't know exactly, but a way where you say, okay, this patch is the good one, just ignore this part. Uh, that would be great. Also, it could be also great to have it in a way that everybody can consume it, like for example with a REST API or something like that. So we, we stop for once at all duplicating job because that's something that annoys me a lot. Um, so with this goal in mind, let's try to focus a bit more on the roadmap. Something that we have to do at least this week is to, perform, uh, to improve the performance we're doing a lot of things on the client side of it that we can do in the back end. So move the things that we can do in the back end. Um, it would be great to integrate better with, this, with the Debian security tracker, of course, if that's okay with you. Uh, it uh, could be great to have something like a field called it patch instead of, because right now we are just pulling every URL that appears in the tracker and see if that's a patch. So if instead of doing that, there is a way to say, okay, these are patches. Don't go around and search for things. Uh, I'm not sure if, if everybody knows what I'm talking about, but I can show you quickly. Um, so the, the, this is the source of the security tracker. This, this is the, the file where the, the, the security tracker consumes for generating the website. Um, This is a good example of why we need a, 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 instead of saying node, we should say something like patch, and then the, real, uh, the URL here. Because something that we do right now, for example, is go into that URL, and, and this is a patch, and we're going to try to backboard that one, but that's not a patch. That's a point where the, 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 the bug was introduced. So that, that's obviously, we're doing it wrong. 
uh, okay, this is this is typical situation where in that commit in this line the the vulnerability is solved. So this is a case of, of a patch. So it, what, what I'm suggesting is instead of having node, just basically having patch. So we can automatically know or quickly know which ones are patches. And of course, this way with the token to push in in the, 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 in the database is not nice. We, we, we plan to have a user registration interface, but probably for the developers, it's just basically, it, it's just easier to use the single sign-on that we already have. So this is on the, on, the, on the integration part. We can discuss a, a bit more about this later. Um, as I said, it would be great to, to be able to crawl other distros searching for patches. Uh, we tried to do something with the Red Hat uh, website, but it's not so easy to find which is, uh, which is the patch that's all patch vulnerability. Uh, in the same way that I'm suggesting to have a patch fill, it would be great to have a POC fill. Because sometimes we add there in the tracker like a proof of concept, whether we know that this file is the one that makes the program fail. Uh, maybe we can use that program that makes you fail to check if the patch is good. I don't know exactly how to automatize that, but it would be great to, to, to have something like that. That will give you even more guarantees that that patch is a good one. Um, about interface improvement, for that, uh, I need you guys to, to test it. Take a look to it. In, in here in the URL, you can, um, you can find instructions about how to install it nowadays. If we integrate it, it will be easier, but nowadays, right now, you can go there and, and try it. If you need a token for pushing things in the, in the, the database, just let me know, I can, I can give you one. Um, the, 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 the interface is an, it's an important part of it. Uh, I have been using a bit and trying to detect some things that are here there, but uh, probably you have come up with better, better examples. Um, in IBM, a lot of people are very excited about using machine learning uh, in this context. I'm not a machine learning guy, so I have no idea how exactly. The measure, for example, that it could be, could be possible to find the, 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 the injection point of the patch with machine learning, I don't know how. Also, that the, the, the custom runs, instead of being custom doing by, by hand, maybe a machine can learn to do that. Again, I, I have no idea exactly how, because that's not my field. Um, yeah, so, so let me see if something about this part is missing. Yeah, also like, uh, for example, if we, if we start ignoring things like, for example, uh, changes in the change log, maybe already the machine knows that we usually ignore text files for patching. So maybe automatically the, 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 the backend can ignore those kinds of situations. The, the, this, this, if somebody here is good at machine learning, you know, have ideas about how machine learning can be available, I, I'm, I'm happy to listen more about it. And, and Lately, it would be great to add more new fancy ways to include this patch uh, in backport versions. Um, the, the, right now, we have really basic heuristics, but um, for example, if we take all the situations where we cannot handle it and we make a taxonomy of them, we see why they, cannot, why they don't work or, or some sort of classification, maybe we can come up with more generic ways to solve the situations. Something, for example, that exists in academia for some time already is, was developed by Intria in, in, in France. Um, it's something called it semantic patches, which is an idea that I would like to talk about that, uh, shortly as an example of what it could be a fancy heuristic. For example, take out this, this, this patch file. This patch file solves uh, an old problem. It's, it's, an, old, it's an old bug. Uh, so it's a typical serialization issue, right? That is, um, so the patch basically removes the uh, unsafe use of pickle in Python, adds a, a new module for doing proper uh, serialization, and then modifies the use of it uh, for serializing, for unserializing. And the, 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 this, this uh, hang from the bottom is repeated several times in the patch. So if we want to, if we have this target, this button, this patch is not working, it's not, it's not merging properly. Okay, can you see why? 
check it out. The, the line 19, sorry, the line 18, which reads a uh, response uh, read, it should match to the line 17, no, 79. Uh, but the variable was uh, renamed. Because of that difference, it, 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 the, 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 the matching does not work. So semantic patch abstract this by using, instead of the syntaxes, using the AST. So it's abstract from, from variables. They, uh, they use meta variables, so it doesn't matter the name of the variable, and, and it founds this uh, matching point uh, quickly. Another thing which is slightly subtle to see is the fact that the distance, the tabulation is different, the indentation is different. That makes also the, the, the patch hard to merge in the, in the target. A semantic patch is abstract from that kind of uh, syntax uh, issues. Another thing that semantic patches uh, uh, had is something called isomorphism, which is based on the situation that all these lines in C are this, do the same. So basically, if I search for the match for the first one, it doesn't matter if it's represented like the second one. For C, the, the, the INRA project has already a full database of isomorphism, pieces of code that do exactly the same. But if it's possible to extend these with other languages, for example, in Python, check it out. The patch in the top needs to, to match in the target in the bottom. The line 19 and 20 are semantically equivalent to the, to the lines 12 of the chain. But in the top, we're using concatenation, while in the, in the bottom, we're using a replacement, string replacement. A substitution is called. Um, if there, is, if there is a way okay, to say, okay, the line 12 is, exactly, is doing exactly the same that like line, uh, like line 19, in that case, the merge, the, 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 the merge of the patch is, is direct. So this, I, I tried to start playing with these kind of ideas. Uh, there are a lot of engineering issues uh, that I couldn't finish to. But uh, if you come up with other ideas, uh, and all ears, it would, it would be great. Um, everything is, is uh, MIT licensed. You can download the source code here in this URL. Um, yeah, the patch crawler is written in Node.js in case you want to, to, to write something there. The patch itself is written in Python. Um, another thing that you can contribute with is to add patches in the security tracker. Uh, if you know that a commit in GitHub is fixing a security, a security uh, patch, let the security team know. And the last point is about if you are fixing a vulnerability, put in your header, in the, in the, in the patch header, which is the CDID. That's key because we can also use that information for uh, porting that patch to a different version. So that, that's, all, that's all my presentation. So now if, if it's start okay with you, let's try to see if you have comments, ideas. Um, I'm all, all ears. Um, thanks, that looks nice. Um, I'm willing to try it out. Um, couple of feature suggestions that I had. Um, one particularly useful would be to check like whether a patch does not apply at all in the case that code might not yet be present. Let's say pretty like, like that, um, for example, you're patching a function which does not exist, that would be something that could like even be like found mostly automatic. Another... Um, so, so, so hold on, that, that's, that, that's super interesting. So what you're suggesting is like, if the part that we're trying to match does not exist in the code, maybe the code that we're trying to patch is not vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, you, could, you could, I think pretty, uh, there could be pretty reliable heuristics to detect whether vulnerable code is not, at all, at least to give it a strong indication that it can still review mm -hmm. it. That, that's, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. And I think another, um, so whenever we receive patches um, which target, so, so often let's say there's some hypothetical application um, called version, or in version 3 and the upstream fix adds a new uh, library function which fixes a specific um, problem like 
introducing a language check, etc. And um, for that patch, the upstream authors usually only fix the call sites. Of course, only the call sites which are present in version 3 are present. And whenever we receive patches, um, one of the things where you need to be very, very careful whether the pack port has been done right is whether actually all call sites in the older version are fixed because it might be that there are actually, um, like, let's say for example, there's um, the fix involves introducing a new function which now um, verifies um, user input, for example. And um, the upstream author has fixed like all the users of the affected function in the current version, but the old version might simply have different functions. So um, just applying a patch like um, simply with the existing hands might simply miss existing um, affected function between them in the original version. So that would be like, really useful to. Yeah, I have no idea how to summarize that what, that idea though. Yeah, we, we can discuss it later. Or, <laughs> yeah. or I can add it to, to the to the copy pad. Yeah. And uh, speaking for the changes to the security tracker, um, um, we can certainly do all that. Um, I think it needs um, to have some further discussion on the um, specific syntax of the design. But um, right now, Node is like a catch-all for anything, like arbitrary comments. But we can definitely make this a little bit more structurized so that. Fixed version and specific branches at any time. Yeah, yeah. Could be, could be, for example, that the patch that depends on specific versions, but it's not generic. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, let, let's discuss that. We, we mm -hmm. need to. Need to oh, yeah, but that's, that's right. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other comment or a feedback? Another one from Ritz. <laughs> I, I, I forgot one thing. Um, um, I don't think this necessarily, of course, some of the existing data sources are tied to the security tracker, but I don't think this necessarily should be um, limited or tied to security updates. We have the very same problem with backporting standard um, standard functionality bug fixes to an older release. Yes. So I don't think um, this should be like a part of the security tracker. It, for the specific case of backporting security vulnerabilities, it would reuse a lot of the logic. But I think it should be equally supported and be so, so the, the, the use case should be kept in mind to simply yeah. backport the, the thing is, we start with just patches in JAR, but uh, security patching has the feature of, of uh, being super small and that end up being key because when you have a huge patch, the, the, the possibilities of not having a match is huge too. And even worse, uh, when you have these ambiguities, they explode exponentially. So if in every step you have new ambiguities, you end up with a lot of possible patches at the end of the of the tree. That's why we, we, we focus on security patches to, to just keep it keep the patches small. So IRC is also inside just like you. Yep. So, thank you so much for your attention.